So this is how this works with Mark. Hey, go pick me up lunch and I'll hook up your, your RODI unit. So my do-it-yourself project is now a go get Mark lunch project. I still don't understand why Jimmy gave me a hard time about that. I scratch his back, he scratches mine. He grabs me lunch, I make his RODI unit make water. What's wrong with that? These things are actually really easy and straightforward to set up. There's a couple key things you want to make sure you do. First of all, the water coming into your RODI unit always has to be from the cold side of your faucet. So whether you're hooking up your RODI unit on your laundry machine or under a sink connection with an angle stop, make sure that you're using the cold water. You never want to run hot water into these things. I like to color code things. Blue to me is always water coming into the unit. An R 100 gallon per day unit, it goes right here into the first connection here. This is a push connect fitting. All you gotta do is push it in there. You'll push through the resistance. You'll feel it snap into place and then you got it. Stage one, this is a sediment filter. This removes physical things in your water. Particles, things that we don't want getting into the rest of the system and clogging things up. Stage two, this is the carbon block. This removes chemical pollutants in your water. Chlorine, chloramine, things like that. Then the water goes up through the RO membrane. This further cleans your water, removes pollutants, and then it comes down here in chamber four into the DI, also known as deionization membrane, and then the water comes out of the system. Again, I like to color code things. So we have the red coming out. This is gonna go to your RODI holding vat, your brew trash can, whatever you use to use RODI to hold RODI water. Now on our unit, it has a brain a microprocessor, so we gotta plug it in. I got power right behind me for that. But don't forget your waistline, which to me is always black, your water, your RODI unit is going to make some water and it's going to waste some water as well. So this has to go to some kind of drain line. Now, if you're not comfortable tapping into a drain line, you can take this end of the tube, put it down in a sink drain. I recommend you clamp it off. That way it doesn't fall out accidentally and put water all over your floor. So with that, his unit's ready to go. Let's go make some water. Now, while Jimmy does know that I'm setting up an RODI unit, he does not know that I'm gonna actually start filling his tank. That means for now, that RODI unit is gonna stay in his hallway so that the outlet tube can reach the tank. Of course, I'm going to clamp off the unsecured tube and then wait for Jimmy to come back with my lunch. Man, I hope he hurries up. I'm hungry. Here he is. Oh, whoa. We're filling your tank, buddy. Yes. Finally. Woo. Next step to becoming a saltwater aquarium hobbyist. I, I saw the unit yeah. out in the hall, yeah, yeah. but it's coming right out of the RODI unit. <laughs> yep. So that's great, but my fish can't live in that. They got to have saltwater. So am I going to mix it in here? Kind of. You're going to take the fresh water and make it salt water. Right, so this will be all fresh water. Mm -hmm. And then I'll mix it in here or in the sump? Actually, it doesn't matter. So there's two ways to do it. One, you can put it in the sump and you can use a little piece of PVC to stir it up because a lot of people think if I put the salt in my sump, the water's gonna run through the sump, it'll dissolve. It actually takes a long time. So you can put it in your sump, but then I recommend you stir it with something to help yeah. it dissolve or since your tank is smaller and one of the power heads in here, you could just- Hold, hold on. Since my tank is smaller? It, you know, we're not talking about a 10 foot tank, Jimmy, where <laughs> if you put salt in the middle of it- Did I get too small of a tank? <laughs> in time. Okay. Okay. So, since the tank is smaller, I didn't say it was small, I said it was smaller, we'll have enough flow that if you put salt in here, there's gonna be enough flow to help mix it. If we had a big 10 foot tank, the flow mainly is gonna be on the ends. You could put salt in the center and then the next morning it would still be there. So am I just gonna scoop it out and dump it in like yep. this? Yep. Okay. Now, How do I get it all the way full before I do that? So there's two ways to do that. One, we could leave the line in here, let this fill up the tank. When it fills up the tank, it'll fulfill the overflow box and then go down into your sump. Then you turn on your return pump and you'll be up and rolling. Something that I've learned, the fun trick is, we can actually take this line and then you fill up your sump first. Here's why you want to do that. You fill up the sump, 
then you plug in your return pump and push water back into your tank. Then if you notice you have a plumbing leak, then you can fix it. But while you're fixing your plumbing leak, you put the line back up here so your tank continues to fill. Very smart. So fill the sump first. Fill the sump first, turn on the return pump, and make sure you don't have the leaks. Or if you're very confident in your plumbing, just fill the tank and let the whole system fill. I mean, it's pretty straightforward down there. I think it's not going to leak. My utility sink didn't <laughs> leak. Yeah, there you go. One for one check for me. So um, the next question is the salinity. Mm -hmm. Testing the salinity in here. Uh, There's two ways you can do that. You okay. can do that with an old refractometer. You drop some water and you look through the light. But I got you one of my favorite pieces of saltwater aquarium gear, the Hanna salinity checker. Turn it on put it down to the water and it gives you a digital reading of not only the salinity, but also the temperature. Sweet. So I'm not like taking samples out or anything. I'm nope. just putting it in there. And you, you can use it in your mixing station, plop it in. It's good to go. And it's that accurate. It's that accurate and it's waterproof. So if you drop it in here, it's not going to get ruined. Now, one thing I like to do with it, you mentioned accuracy is they make these little 35 PPT calibration packets once a week. I put it down in there, you hit the calibration button, it runs the calibration, it takes like 15 seconds. Super simple just to keep it accurate. So can. how critical is it to hit right on on the salinity? So if you're 34 or 36 PPT, or for those of you that use uh, specific gravity, if you're 1.024 or 1.026, even 1.023, 1.027, it's not like your tank is gonna fall apart. Those are different numbers, 34, PPT, mm -hmm. parts per, per thousand. thousand. Yep. Okay, and what was the other? It's just another way of measuring? Another way of measuring specific gravity. You hear 1.025. Okay, yeah, so and what does the HANA measure in so PPT? It, in PPT. I'll actually do either as default to PPT, so okay. I just leave it PPT. And so I put it in there, it's gonna tell me um, that I'm on 34. I don't wanna go over, so I can add salt. But uh, like anything, you can't, it's harder to take yeah. out. I would have to put more fresh yeah, ODI water, water in out, and then, then put, put in our ODI water. You have to yeah, throw to, in some salt water. I got gotcha. you. So I'm going to gradually work up to it. So now I have my, then I'll have my salt water in here. Yep. Do this thing have to cycle for like a month or, you know, because the thing is, I've been, to, I don't know how many trade shows that are in convention centers. And they didn't have those things in there for a month. They brought those fish in there, yep. but I've seen online, everyone's like, ah, it's got a cycle, it's got a cycle. So when can I put my little Nemo fish in here? So you need three things. You need temperature to be right, 76 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit, salinity 1.025 specific gravity or 35 PPT. Then you need some kind of nitrifying bacteria. Now, some people would say grab a rock from a friend who has a saltwater tank. The thing is, that could bring in diseases to your tank. So what I do is, I have Dr. Tim's one and only that fine bacteria. I got you some of that. All you gotta do is shake it up, pour it in the tank, and then you can actually add some small, like a pair of clownfish into your tank. When you add the bacteria, you're good to go. Yep. You know, I spent all that time, you know, you and I went down to, to ORD. ORA. What did I see? This, this, O D R D I D O R. This is all making a mess. Next time I see you, you're gonna be like, yeah, I got my ORA. Yeah, I go in with this plenty of PPT and then my <laughs> nitrates with the blah, 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 and everyone's. That's crying. right. It's a, it's a lot. I keep mixing up my acronyms. Get them O R A. Which honestly, I'm I'm sorry, Jordan. I don't know what O R A stands for. Ocean reefs and aquariums. Ah, oh, it's just O R A. So when can I put coral in here? Okay. So you don't need to wait months and months and months to put coral in your tank. I actually like to get coral in there very quickly because it's going to add to some of the biodiversity in your tank. Coral is going to be on a plug or it's going to have a skeleton, which is going to bring in sponges and other critters and bacteria that you want in your tank. Because look, we're starting with a sterile environment, dry rock, dry sand. We're going to add the nitrifying bacteria, but largely that's it. You got to build some biofilms in your tank. The coral is going to help with that. So we'll bring in some hardy starter corals as a way that does things like that from the get-go. You do that about a week after you've done cycling your tank. Once you put the fish in there with the bacteria, and then what you, I like to do is just let it rest. Two weeks, two or three weeks, see how the corals do. Make sure everything is okay with your tank. We're going to talk about that in a cycling show, and then we'll go from there. 
So Dr. Tim's, is that what it was called? Yeah, Dr. Tim's one and only. So I'm gonna put Dr. Tim's in here and then I'm gonna check my system and like a week later I'm gonna put things in. Put the Dr. Tim's in, you can either add an ammonia, he sells ammonia product if you wanna do a fishless cycle, or in your case we're gonna put two clownfish in here. Yeah. Which some people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, you're putting fish in a new tank. We're adding the nitrifying bacteria in the product and we're adding two fish to a 100 gallon tank. It's no different than you going out to the beach, taking a whiz in the beach and then checking the nitrates and be like, huh, there's no nitrates. Like you're making, it's like little, the amount of waste that two clownfish produce in a 180 gallon, 200 gallon tank is small. The bacteria takes care of it. We'll talk about that in the, the cycling show. It's very safe, it's very effective. I've done it with all my systems. All right, that is awesome. I cannot wait. Great, well this is gonna take forever. Why don't we go eat dinner and uh, I'll come back in a couple days and see how it looks. Perfect, let's do that. All right.